Do, 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 do. That's better. Oh, there we go. Hey, multi retro man here. Now, I'm going to do a quick video now of something that I found quite unexpectedly. Um, I found it basically by watching a YouTube video that somebody had done. What's it about? Well, for many years, I've enjoyed using ZX Spectrums for when I was a kid. For anybody that doesn't know what a ZX Spectrum is, it's an old 8-bit computer made by Clive Sinclair. Picture one run here. Now, what was so special about it, you might be asking. Well, it was an affordable computer at the time, which was half the cost of a Commodore 64, which is another 8-bit computer that had awesome graphics, well, really lovely colours, uh, the sound on it was fantastic, the Commodore 64. The Spectrum was a bit of more of a beep, uh, whereas the Commodore 64 had a SID chip, uh, which I'm not going to go into big details, because like I say, this is about the Zelix Spectrum, right? Talking about the Spectrum, then what many people have done, okay, is they um, they bought, well, they, they you know, down downloaded emulators and paid for various other emulators, um, for example, Spectaculator. Now, a lot of people pay lots of money for Spectaculator, including myself on the Android. Excuse me. But um, the problem was, it hasn't been updated for many years now. Now, there was an issue that I had with the, the one on Android, um, saying, how do you load games from a memory card? Because at the time, I'd got a, a, an S7 Edge phone, and the storage was running out on it, so I thought, well, I can use, I can stick a memory card in it, which I did, and I wanted to use that. Situation was, you couldn't use that because they didn't allow it. So I messaged the guy, and the the response was, click, doing a certain thing, which I'd already done anyway, but that didn't work. So I then replied back saying, look, I've tried that, but that doesn't work. I need just to want to know how to load from the mem from the memory stick. No reply back. So. From what, what was once the best Spectrum emulator available for both Android and the Windows PCs, it is now becoming, well, let's just say not the best now because I've found something else that's even better. Now, I've tried various ones like uh, Fuse. That's a good Spectrum emulator. Um, there's one called Z80S. And to be honest... They're good, but they, are, they certainly like something. Now, I saw a video of one, and it, like with the other ones, you can load the games up and they load the games faster, whatever, you know, but it seemed to like something. So, you know, like when you put the, you know, when you put a tape in cassette and you play the game, you know, they'll load, play the cassette and everything else. They seem to be, um, how can I put? No, there wasn't really any realism with it. You know, you didn't you didn't feel like you were actually loading the game properly like you would do in the 80s. You know, like putting the actual cassette in, pressing the, t the play on the cassette player and typing, well, pressing the J key for load and then sh symbol shift and P to get the speech marks and then pressing return and then loading the game that way. However, this one actually does. And it's and I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Retro Virtual Machine. And at first I was thinking, what's you know, what's this all about? And why is it any better? Well, I'll tell you for one. There was one game that I had when I was younger. And the game was called Jasper. Okay, and I bought the original game. And it had... It was, it was a very strange kind of game. Because you basically controlled a mouse that was jumping up and down on you know levels. But you had to avoid the baddies. Things like lions or tigers, whatever they were, and things like that. So, the music or the sound, if yeah, there wasn't music in it, you know, it just it was just like a repeated bits, if you like, you know, so little bips, little beeps. But on the spectaculator one, if you imagine the the speed of it, I was possibly running at about an eighth of the speed. So instead of like going, it went, and the animation instead of it being smooth, it was very very slow so and it was I, I would say you know if, if you're comparing it instead of like being 60 frames a second which is a smooth game that was probably when it was probably running to about five or maybe four it was awful
Now, I had an issue with my laptop that I'd, for some silly reason, I'd, I'd enabled eco mode on it. Because yeah, I know Windows did an update, Windows 10 did an update, and it disabled the eco mode on my laptop. So, oh, sorry, it disabled the ability to enable it, if that makes sense, because they said that eco mode wasn't necessary for Windows 10. And I reinstalled the, stop, the software to, to do that, you know, to change the settings, because I thought that's what it needed. And then when I looked into it, I found out there's actually five settings for it. It looks like there's four eco modes and one to turn it off. And for some reason, I'd gone through it and I thought that I was using the turbo mode and it wasn't. I was actually using the one of the eco modes. So anyway, that, that's a long story short. Um, the reason why I'm telling you that, though, is because when I used the Retro Virtual Machine emulator, it was playing the game Jasper at exactly the same speed, roughly, as what the Spectaculator was. Now, what then happened was um, when I disabled the eco mode i thought well i'll try the game again just to see what it looks like and it plays perfectly absolutely superb spectacular there's a, a there seems to be a little bug with it where it, every so often it keeps stopping the gameplay for maybe a second two seconds and that is a big problem because you, you know you're trying to play a game properly and it's stopping midway is ridiculous um, and because I, was, I think something somebody commented, maybe it's one of the Windows updates. But from that point of view, I cannot recommend you buy or pay any money for Spectaculator now. Because like I say, it hasn't been updated for years. Now here is a video of me using the retro virtual machine just to see, show you how good it actually is. Right, now what you've got here... Uh, this part on the left hand side is the actual main screen that you use now you've got on here I've set up four different uh, machines if you like ZX Spectrums and an Amstrad CPC 464 just for experimental reasons for the Amstrad now when you first load it when you first download it and install it it doesn't have anything set up so you <coughs> have to set up whichever machine that you want you know See if I can do it now. So go to the real machine. On here you've got there create machine. Okay, so if you click on create machine, you've got choices there of which ones you want. Now you can pick either an Amstrad one or a Spectrum. So if you wanted another Spectrum one, click on next, and you've got Spectrum plus three A, whatever, or clones. Now so I'll just choose clones for example. So click on next, <coughs> and there you've got ZX Uno or Inverse Spectrum. Now I'm not quite sure what they are. So you think, well, I don't want them ones. You click on the previous, go back to the previous one, click on next, and you've got all these on here now. You've got different ones, Spanish, etc., etc., etc. But that's how that's how you would create it. Once you've done, click finish, then the ones would appear in here. Um, so I've already got the ZX 48K Spectrum one on. So what I'm just doing is I'm at the moment just moving it out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. And here you are with this is the main screen here. Now, this is where you've got, you can use a normal keyboard. Now, what you need to do here, if you want to load a normal cassette game, which is quite nice, if you double tap on it, it gets rid of the, <coughs> excuse me, the cassette. So if you click on the thing for the cassette, it makes the window a bit smaller. So what you would do normal way, shift, uh, sorry, the J key for, to load, and then the control and P for speech marks, and press return. Now, this will be the normal spectrum where it loads, now I click play on that and it doesn't do anything. So what you do is you stop and eject. And what this does is takes you to a screen or gives you an option to load a particular game. So in this case, I'm going to load up Jasper. So click on open. Now straight away, it gives you a nice little thing there with a the cassette. So there, program Jasper. So as you would do in the original thing, now you've got record, play, rewind, advance, stop, eject, pause. So we just click on play. And now this is what I love about this. It shows you the little cassette reel running. Now, if you don't want to watch the rest of the game, uh, so the rest of it loading up because it's a bit monotonous, you've got a fast forward button there. So if you click that, it fast forwards it, but it's as though like you're fast forwarding an actual uh, an old video, you know, VHS cassette. Um, and I love the way they've done this. This is absolutely fantastic. The only thing I'm not so keen on is it does it when, like, if you put it on fast forward and you're playing a game, it's not as good. Right. So now, 
Now it's not running as fast as it was before for some reason. Now this was actually running at full speed before and I'm not quite sure why it's slowed down. And I'm coming around just because it's loading maybe it's just recording at the same time. I'm going to pause recording just to see. This is what it looks like when you pause it. Quite funky really. Reset that. Obviously, because it's paused, it won't reset proper, so you do that and pick a different one. Now, one of your options you've got is when you load normal games, click on the little arrow there, click on load state, and this is where you can load your Z80s and your SNA files. So, like Jack, the Beanst uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. That one. There we go. So, that loads straight away, you see, so you're not messing about with the, the other stuff. If that actually works, I'm not sure I don't. I don't know how to play this game. There we go. Hmm. As you can tell, I can't remember how to play the game. Now this is more like it. Jetpack. So I'm now using the actual little joypad. My Xbox 360 joypad. Download a different version, and this one works perfect. So, if you like this video and you thought it was useful, please give it a, a thumbs up or a like, whatever they call it on here, and consider, consider subscribing to my channel um, because I've done lots of other videos as well regarding emulation things, things on how to help cars, that type of stuff. So. Just general all sorts of bits and bobs, so just check them out, see what you think, and uh, let me know what you'd like to see more of, or what you'd like to see less of. One thing I forgot to mention, I'm using it hands-free now, so I'm still on the uh, thing here. Uh, I forgot to mention that I do some uh, t-shirt designs and stuff, so retro things, uh, anything really that you like designing, I'd gladly do a design for you and just pay, charge a nominal fee for doing that, you know, so if a t-shirt, for argument's sake, costs £8, I'd only charge maybe a couple of pounds for the designing of it and doing everything else for you. Um, check it out, my other videos with it. Um, and also I've got a Facebook group called Multi Retro Mania that is very good as well. Which again, it's mostly uh, sort of retro things, but it also contains the link to my uh, website that I do things on. Um, you can send messages on there, anything that you'd like doing, anything you'd like to see, any problems you've got with emulators or anything like that, and I'll try and help as much as I can. So. Check that out as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.